thought that uh, James Marshall, brother of Hamish Marshall, and uh, on the other side of him is uh, Craig Cumming, who's almost a veteran now in his third test match. When you consider the top order for New Zealand, one, two and three, hardly any experience between them. But James Marshall, this is the moment. He's watched his brother come through and score a test match 100 against Australia. What a fairy tale if he was able to make a good fist of this here this morning. He's been thrown right in the deep end. And boy, the thoughts going through his mind will be quite incredible. Can he stay in the now? Can he stay in the zone and say, it's only a red cricket ball and uh, I've got to be able to play it. I've got to back myself. And Craig coming at the other end has looked fairly solid in his test start so far for New Zealand. Ricky Ponting, I would imagine, would have liked to have uh, batted first. He sort of intimated that at the toss, that the pitch looks a very good one. That, that means Australian captains like to bat first. This, uh, Hayden Langer, Ponting, Martin, Clark, Kadich and Gilchrist. That's the bulk of the batting with Gilchrist, the danger man at seven, back-to-back -back hundreds in this test series already with Warren, Gillespie, Casper, it's a McGrath and sadly for Brett Lee, there ain't no room for him. There's plenty of room on the terraces though and plenty of room here at Eden Park so uh, local people get on down to see the world's best in action for the last time in this series. Right, uh, opening the batting for us in the commentary box will be Christopher Cairns and alongside of him, Martin Crow. Thank you Smithy, morning everyone. Glenn McGrath all set to go here, eyeing up uh, 500 test wickets. May not uh, get the chance in this test match, but uh, he's in terrific form. 492, so eight more to go to reach that wonderful milestone. Just 109 matches to 21 average and a best of eight for 24. He's uh, looked superb so far in the first two tests. But he's uh, had a challenge against Cumming, who has uh, played well in his first two test matches of his career. He will start off for New Zealand. All set to go. Third test. And typically, uh, Christopher Cairns on target. Yeah, morning, Martin. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to be intrigued to see how the Australians bowl this morning because... Even though Stephen Fleming has won the toss, there'll be a little bit in it. Normally is. First morning of a test match, and I felt in Christchurch that the Australian bowlers weren't quite on target in that first session. So, interesting to see if they've addressed that. Here's his first runs in Test cricket. James Marshall also picks up his first boundary. Knocking a good delivery down through the slips cordon. First runs for New Zealand. Joins his brother. The sun has come out. Coming up to 11 o'clock in the morning here. Eighth over the match. And that's a good stroke. Won't go all the way. It's uh, the quickest at the moment, uh, Eden Park, with the rain they've had in the last few days. But that's a confidence-boosting stroke by Marshall to move to seven. Yeah, and Gillespie just overcompensating here. You've, you've seen the amount of movement he's been creating away from the batsman. He's bowled slightly straighter, looking to swing it, but unfortunately for Gillespie, and fortunately for James Marshall, a bad line there and just picked off easily. That'll make James Marshall feel a bit better. Yeah. And Cumming gets in on the act. That's a good stroke, straight on drive. Second of threes off Gillespie now. And Mick! But an excellent stroke from coming. Yes! Beautiful stroke. That's not a bad way to uh, wear down the guy who's going to bowl next. Whoa. Kasparovic just hit three threes uh, past him. This is the best of the three. 
really good stroke. He just held the, the bat on the ball there, played it to below the eyes and controlled it along the ground. So Marshall into double figures. Oh, this is a big shout. He's gone. Jeremy Lloyd says you cannot pad up to that. That's come back a long way. So Gillespie makes uh, the first breakthrough for Australia. And it is Craig Cumming who is going. Padding up. And we look here, there'll be quite an appreciable movement back, and that's out. You need to be playing those deliveries. Not a difficult decision for Lloyds. And Gillespie, after going for rather expensive over, finishes it brilliantly for Australia. Disaster for New Zealand. 15 for 1. Taking it on. Magnificently played. So he's in the mood again, Hamish Marshall. And he's got the odds much more in his favour. We've been talking about he might have got out to the hook shot, pull shot down the road. Well, I like it. I think it's a strength of, of Marshall. It's also a strength of coming. This is where batsmen can put some pressure on this Australian unit is when they lose their length. If they do tend to lose it, they do tend to lose it a little bit short. And if you can punish them, you give yourself a good chance of putting some pressure back onto the bowling. And pick your ball too. That's over. Pick your spot. 28 for one. Oh, oh, close. Close. It did a lot. Rudy Kirsten not to, drawn into making a decision in the affirmative on that occasion. This ball doing a lot off the seam. Coming back a long way. I'll tell you what, I believe this to be a very, very good yell. It was only really a half-hearted appeal by the Australians. Perhaps they thought there was a bit of bat on that. Relatively high. Yeah, it's got him above the back pad, really. A bit of width. Expansive stroke. Good result. Sure is. It's uh, the Marshall twins going to business, and that was a, an excellent shot. 42 for one. Yeah, the family uh, family Marshall at the crease at the moment. Mum and Dad perhaps uh, not quite as productive as these two. Gillespie fighting hard just to get a better rhythm going. His line's a bit all over the shop at the moment. That'll do. If you're going to swing, you swing hard. Therefore, an edge is going to fly. James Marshall moves on to 28, and it's uh, 51 for one. Gillespie seems to be pretty keen on attacking with the short ball which is interesting at the moment. Yes, yes. Out. James Marshall has had his first test innings ended. And Glenn McGrath gets the nibble, doesn't he? They'd left him so well up until this point. James Marshall got away with a cup and just couldn't help himself that is the line that they'd been leaving and straight to the safe hands of Matthew Hayden who's back in that gully position and James Marshall finally goes for 29 53 for 2 New Zealand through the gap and runs for the New Zealand captain just a couple probably a good idea 56 for two. Now that's a nice start for the New Zealand captain. In the air and lovely shot there from Stephen Fleming. And it's shots like these will help him grow in confidence and get those tootsies of his going. Yeah, and using the unusual shape of this ground to his advantage, Fleming. Warren flighting that up. And Fleming lofting it beautifully over deep mid-wicket. 
Now, whether there's a, a, a niggle going on, there's some sort of preservation of McGrath for later, I, I'm not too sure, but the batting is starting to get a nice momentum about it. This partnership is, and that brings up the 100 runs for, for New Zealand. Oh, lovely shot. Oh, like undone by the stumps at the other end. Well, Fleming's look was a classic. He, he struck this beautifully. This is what, one of the better shots he's played, only to pick out middle stump at the other end and cost himself runs. Immediately looked down at the pitch and probably felt, gee, that's unlucky. That's a good stroke, and he's found the gap. Full shot last over, now he brings out the cut, his favourite. And he goes to 49. Fifty up for Hamish Marshall on a day with his twin brother and his mate is Tate Tabor and there he is. That's a terrific little moment for Hamish Marshall. Catch! And that's a good area for Stephen Fleming. He can go with the spin. Always in mind though, he's got to stay trying to hit, almost hit down the ground and then it will naturally with the spin go to that onside Jeremy Lloyds, you never know what you're going to get with him. He's, he's a, an unusual umpire, to say the least. That one is very, very close. It's turned back a long way. It's hit him on the back leg, the inside thigh. Where's that going on the hit? Well, that's easy pickings for Marshall. We've talked about how good he is with a stroke. Stroke. Nicely time, timed by Fleming. Well, this over's given New Zealand a bit of momentum because they took seven runs off it. Easily the best off McGrath today. Oh. Well, is that a chance? It's been a genuine legs uh, glance. And Clark, who's uh, just behind the corner, just around the corner in that leg slip position, maybe he's put down a very difficult half chance here. Yeah, that's gone down, half chance. Clark to his left. Pulled away. And beautifully played too. Loose delivery from Warren. You don't often see that uh, long hop bowl. Marshall was onto it. Fleming 50. In fact, you go to 51. That will give him a great deal of satisfaction, I'm sure. Now, where will he attack Fleming? Outside that off stump. Catch that! Was that off a, a little inside edge? Got a feeling it just slipped past again. Yeah, no, no nowhere close for, for my liking. But um, <laughs> yes. again, it's just pressure uh, being exerted. Uh, again, the Australians searching. Yeah, no. <laughs> Gilchrist, not really interested. Kadich with a wonderful swan dive. <laughs> nice, Warney. Nice Quick single. Oh, now it's just going to be close. Jeremy Lloyds turns and he's called for the third umpire. Oh, this would be devastating if it's a positive outcome for Australia. New Zealand skipper. 
trying to push the athleticism of Warren to get across after his follow through Fleming has got to go oh this is going to be one of those ones folks you have to jog for a wee while here I think that looks as if it might be close to the line there's the bail gone and I just feel that that might be out very close you see the shadows over the line there but no, that looks even closer like that. You see, it looks as if it might just be beyond the line. Gee, this is close, Jeremy. And that... It's one of those one-frame situations. Well, the first thing you've got to say is that it's, it's so close. Out and See, that's, he's out there. Out. The stumps, they gone? And at this stays there, the bales go, but you see he's now gone beyond the line. So I'm afraid it's one of those ones where it's in between the frames again. We'd like to see some more. Yeah, because the key is when are, when are the bales actually lifted from the stumps? That's the question. Not out. Stephen Fleming survives. It's a very, very close shave three-bladed Gillette job. Now they're just sort of having a chat. Oh, this is a good stroke. This is runs. It's going to be a boundary too, and it's going to be Fleming seventh. She plays this shot well. We sit time and time again. The New Zealand captain getting a delivery pitched on his favourite area, leg stump. And not looking to play that square heading straight through mid-wicket beautifully timed shot bit of woods again a sense of wrist rather than arm action but this is another boundary Warn continues Oh, he's given him out. Quite a belated decision, I felt. But Marshall has been given out, caught in close on the offside. The other question is, if he hasn't been caught, then is he LBW? Let's have a look and see. Well, we're not quite sure. We, we think the... Umpire indicated LBW. Ponting has gone up for court. We've seen it's gone off the inside edge. Hamish Marshall dismissed for 76. New Zealand 179 for three. Well, I'm interested in Jeremy Lloyd's reaction too as he turned to the scorers. Oh! oh. Astle's underway. Because here's the reaction. He's given him out there. Fleming looks nonplussed at that. And he's turned, look, he's, he's just turned and shown the scorers here at Eden Park that he's touched the leg like that, which would indicate LBW. That's how I thought he was out. See, they're touching it again there. It present ten difficult overs for Fleming and Astor to attempt to get through and close of play. It's important for Australia in this test match that they can they fight for a at least an extra two wickets today. And there's one of them. And it's not with the new ball. It's that man, Kaspervitz, who can slide on. He's always charging in and hitting the deck. He is a great worker. Length and line. And Fleming just not getting the feet moving quickly enough and into position bat was uh, just hanging outside the off stump without any control and it uh, took the inside edge but uh, a great fighting hand from Stephen Fleming he really needed that 218 minutes of uh, real character he's out for 65 though it's 183 for four that's uh, hopped over first slip and it will be four leg buys by virtue of the fact that Vincent played a stroke Well, he 
he's not ever going to give too much away and because of that he creates these false strokes and batsmen doing silly things at times to try and get him away come back a long way it's going to be four buys but that's nip back now whether that came from one of those marks or not I don't know it's come back a long way so far that this uh, will unnerve Lou Vincent just a tad because it's come back and not missed off stump by that much in fact Gilchrist thought it's got to have bowled him that's why he dives so late oh it's hit the seam hasn't it look it's just stayed dead still on, on the angle the seam after it's pitched it's really how it it's must have just shaved off stump. He thought he'd bowled him. Gilchrist thought he'd bowled him, and everyone forgot about the ball. Even Vincent looks uncertain. <laughs> bowled him this time. Let him go. Straight through him. Oh, I don't believe that. He got the clue from the ball before Lou Vincent. He got a clue as if to say, I, I was lucky that last ball with that line. I was lucky to leave it and get away with it. And shaking his head, he's saying to himself, why then didn't I play this line, which is exactly the same, and it's clipped the off bail. It's the perfect delivery, and especially perfect when the batsman doesn't try and get in the way of it that look again that Rasputin look that says New Zealand are 194 for 5 still uh, two overs to go, there'll only be two McGrath and Ash still resume battle oh man how that hasn't hit the stumps I do not know, Nathan Astle and Glenn McGrath share a joke but when we see this again you'll wonder how the heck New Zealand aren't 6 down when it rode him up high, you can see he looks to play and he's exposed the inside, it comes off the pad. Lucky he didn't kick it. Lucky there that he didn't I, get any boot to that at all. Comes off the pad, he sees the trouble, tries to get out to it. I wonder if it hit the, the boot there, Smithy, whether in fact it might have gone onto the stump. I think... Uh, it's the, it's the length, isn't it? It's just that length. In, no one wants to drive it because they know they're not quite there and he does hit the seam. You see, there's a def another defensive stroke. It's going to bring a rare boundary. Bottle that one. Boundary, can't believe. No, Norcan McGrath, 198 for five. Last ball of the day. Looking for two, but will be satisfied, I'm sure, the fact that he's still at the crease. So he leaves, Eden Park, one not out. New Zealand just one run shy of 200. It's been a sedate old day here, the first day of this third test. McGrath, unbelievable figures really. Glenn McGrath, 24 overs, 17 maidens. 24 overs, 17. And there's the first run of the morning for New Zealand and that'll be 200 it's been hard fought and finally they bring up 200 runs in this test match almost a splinter Simon Caddish is in the deep, but he will not be able to get there. That has been smashed straight through the mid-wicket area, so a long way in front of square. Very positive stroke, 207 for five. Here's Gillespie. Runs again through the onside now. If Gillespie's gone wrong so far in the test match, it, it's been just drifting under the leg stump, therefore under the pads of the right-hand batsman. 
there's no doubt I'm going to take another look at that. Yeah, this is four for my liking straight away. Okay, thank you. It looked as though I think it was Simon Kadic. Oh, yeah, so he's, as we're looking at the replay and we're looking out onto the, the ground, it's already been signalled four. was in the air there's no doubt and I have a sneaking suspicion that Hayden might have got half a hand on that yeah, yeah. as he played square of the wicket for four Gillespie if anything has been a little guilty of bowling into that leg stump today and it has cost them once more the edge had taken very good catch so they put the third slip in and immediately it pays dividends for Glenn McGrath and Astell is on his way back. McGrath's kept those impeccable lines and this time Astell just pushing a little bit out in front, got the outside edge and uh, Langer takes that catch well. He'll be pleased with that. He did drop one earlier on in the series but he took that one well. And the hard work of McGrath starting to pay off. Astell on his way for 19. He looked promising this morning, but he's out now. Caught Langer Bolt McGrath in New Zealand. Loses sixth wicket at 228. Drive to four. This time he does find the gap. Very crisp indeed. Punchy bro blow went that abbreviated follow through. Sometimes it appears to be just too much in a hurry. Almost, I think, sometimes trying to match Gilchrist. That's the temptation for a youngster. And he said so before that he would like to be the Gilchrist for this New Zealand side. Well, it's probably the toughest task of all. It's a bit like climbing Everest. Take on that man. Edged. Oh, good catch from Gilchrist. Talking about McCallum and Gilchrist. That is what it's all happened here. And McGrath is also in on the act. McGrath picks up his third wicket. Three for 45 now. Just a little outside edge, but because of the nature of this pitch here at Eden Park, the, the edge was always going down and away from Gilchrist. There it's going down. He's had to reach, really. Just got the gloves down there. And, of course, the celebrations that follow. So Glenn McGrath into his 33rd over, 3 for 45. McCallum departs for 25. New Zealand lose their seventh wicket at 247. Well, good stroke here. That is score. That's a teach. Kaspervitz uh, too full. And uh, as usual with Vittori, it's all arm and wrist action rather than feet. Results the same, though, whichever way you look at it from Stumpy. in a row just a little wide using the pace of the ball Catch. Catch. Hey. Out. Jeremy Lloyds has given him out it sounded very much to me if it was like uh, a boot sound but Franklin's out 262 for 8 Yes, I'm not sure about the catcher being totally convinced about it either. It seemed to turn straight into the middle of the pad. There. Now, whether it picked up a bit of glove on the way out. <coughs> we uh, will not quite know yet. We'll come back to that, but Franklin has gone. Out for three, 262 for eight. Anyway, New Zealand have lost their eighth wicket. Uppercut. 
four runs. Good shot from Wiseman. He's showed a willingness to use his feet and it pays off. In the air, through. You won't worry about ones or threes. We'll take the lot. 280 for eight. Catch! Should be out. And is out. Yeah, good piece of bowling and uh, Wiseman trying to hit against the spin. Gillespie takes a pretty safe running catch in the end and all of a sudden Shane Warne has three. Gillespie, we, we saw Shane Warne indicate to his fielders, look, fellas, just go back a little bit. Fancy my chances here, Wiseman. You, as soon as Zed made contact with the ball that he was in trouble. Gillespie obliging. Wiseman gone, New Zealand uh, 288 for nine. And Warne out thinking Wiseman there ever so slightly. Catch! Through the gap. And that'll race away for four more. Short boundary is exploited there. It's 292 for nine. And that's the end of that. Took two balls, so Chris Martin won't be breaking too many more world records today. Unless he does it with the ball. Kasplowitz uh, tidies it up along with Shane Warne. And just prior to lunch here on the second day, New Zealand are all out. 292. Chris Martin trying to defend and really just providing. Clark with the catch. New Zealand dismissed here in their first innings of the third test match for 292. <laughs> So the New Zealanders there collapsing really. 93 runs. They'll be happy with that, but it's the five wickets that is the most disappointing aspect of the morning's play. The Australians congratulating themselves for a job well done. New Zealand winning the toss, electing to bat. And they'll the Australians will know that 292 will be well below the figure that would have been wanted to have been achieved by the Black Caps. So as we look through the card, James Marshall and Test debut got a good start for 29. Hamish Marshall continuing on his run of the summer, 76 and skipper Stephen Fleming had to work very hard for a patient 65. Brendan McCullum also I thought he looked very good this morning, dismissed by a typical Glenn McGrath delivery. And Franklin Wiseman Martin, a real contribution there, but Vittori pitching with a fine 41. Glenn McGrath, 20 maidens amongst his 34 overs. Three for 49. Shane Warne have been in for three for 63. And Gillespie, I felt, was a, a fine contributor to that bowling effort also. So New Zealand dismissed for 292. The movement there for Chris Martin. Oh, he's going to get uh, four runs here, I think. Yes, it's come down fine enough to beat uh, Chris Martin at final edge. So it's off the bottom edge of the Langer bat. Oh, he's gone! Inside edge! Franklin gets one in the right area. And dragged it back onto the stumps, Justin Langer. He looked pumped up today. He had a lot of purpose about his or spring in his step. But it's failed him. Just an, almost an action replay of how he was dismissed in Christchurch. Just dragging it from outside, off stump, back off from an inside edge, and then onto the stumps. 
So Langer has been bowled by Franklin, and Australia have lost their first wicket with eight runs on the board. That one punched down the ground. He's such a strong player, he's running hard. There's a lot of energy with Matthew Hayden today. 11 for one. Damien Martin, the next man scheduled to come in on the list. And here's Chris Martin. In the air. Well clear. It's not a bad way to get off the mark, I suppose. It's, <laughs> it's instinctive. It's short. And the other thing that Ricky Pining will know is that that is the shortest boundary out there. A top edge, even if it's pretty bell gone straight up in the air, it's going to carry. So he's playing that with no fear whatsoever. He's probably one of the best pull shot players in world cricket. And you get a boundary here. A little streaky, perhaps, as he started, the ball started to move for the first time for Franklin. Yeah, I'm not surprised he gives that little look. Too full and straight this time, and there was a cry of, ah, oh, from Martin. Not a good delivery to back up the one before that, and Hayden up to the task and just puts a straight half volley away through square league for four. Oh! A little bit of swing, but too straight to start with. And Ponting, a lovely shot, threw it on for four. Really don't want to be bowling short to Ricky Ponting when there's a short boundary out on the onside. Now, a few weeks back, we saw in the beige and... Uh, 2020 match we saw Ponting on this very ground playing shots exactly like this like this but it's the test form of the match now and Ponting has just launched into that oh yep a little bit of swing and just getting a little bit straight and that was nothing more than a nudge through the onside and it's gone all the way well, there's two points to be raised here. We saw throughout the New Zealand innings so a propensity for threes to be scored, and Matthew Hayden here with great timing and power. But then the other point to be raised is the outfield quickening up. Oh, no. good, nice. The Australian batsmen nice. just so powerful and strong. They have. Battles away for four, and look at that partnership of 53 already, and only 37 minutes. Hayden going after this one, not overly controlled, but good enough to get it up and over the gully. Belligerent drive through the offside. Enjoy that. Shot. Pure strength, strength and timing from Hayden. Oh, now is this close? Yes, there's the slow hand. Look at it. The left hand, and up she goes. Rudy Kurtzen, thank you very much. Oh, Franklin, two wickets now, and Hayden is out of here. Oh, Matthew Hayden didn't turn and look back. He could tell from the reaction of the crowd and from the players that the slow death was being administered by Mr Kurtzen. He's uh, hit him in front of Midland off, going on to hit Midland leg. And uh, he didn't have to think long about it. It came out of the holster in super slow-mation fashion. It's 84 for two. In the air, oh, and that went through gully. Tama Canning is uh, on the field for Hamish Marshall. And Ponning just launched himself at this stroke. And he could have come unstuck, but uh, had enough on it. 
Well, it was through Tama Canning. You've got a feel for her uh, ever so slightly because he's just walked out into the park and he's into the hot seat there at Gully. Stephen Fleming there uh, to the left of the screen thought that was uh, very catchable indeed. He thought that was a real opportunity. It's a much better shot. He waited and played that so late and he got perfect timing. That raced across the carpet. And he certainly looks to be absolutely masterful anything on side he was uh, nicely crouched and poised Astor knows it 100 up ponning 49 nearly half of them forget about that ponning is in and that's 50 straight gun barrel straight and a half century so 76 minutes 58 balls 53 runs there is a big gap in that cover area and Damien Martin he doesn't move his feet too much but he keeps his head still and watches the ball right onto the back Another pull shot from Ponning, and that'll be into the stands. He is frightfully quick on his feet. Well, every time the New Zealanders have got too short, they've paid the price when it's been bowled to Ponting. He's so quick onto that shot, just swivels and lifts it into that short boundary. The spectators in the first few rows can turn and swivel and watch that one go as well. That one too wide and too short from Wiseman. Swung hard and swung high. The Tory trying the leg stuck line. And Stiers, he goes for half a dozen. Beautiful stroke. And guess what? Ponting's fourth six. We've seen him hit in this area against the faster bowlers this time. It's the spin of Vittori. Ponting coming down the wicket, and realising that ball is going to be going down leg side. Gets underneath it, as he did with the pull shots of the seamers. Oh! Hitting up. Good strike, get. I missed him, buddy. It's all four strokes going in the same region over square leg. So, Ponting 84. Ponting. Similar to the first delivery of Martin's over. Valiant effort by Franklin. Chasing the ball down to the long arm boundary, but another four moving pointing to 92. Well, this is aggression. Not on the bowler's part, because again, it's a half volley, but certainly Ricky Ponning walking into that half volley, and the placement was brilliant because it was just on side of the pitch. Well, good stroke. I'm not tired of that, though. That's good batting. Lifting it deliberately over Gully. 180 for two. Ricky Ponting. 98. Oh, catch! Well, he's going to get 100. But he's played better strokes to get there. But what a terrific innings. He's just lit up this test match which has been fairly sedate and pedestrian up until now he's changed all that there have been a couple of good pieces of fielding to stop him scoring those runs he required to bring up the hundred he'd had enough of that he used his feet and forced a shot over the top what a fantastic hundred this fella is just something else at the moment So there are the New Zealand bowling figures, all in the fours apart from... Uh, is that a little edge going down the leg side? Yes, it is. Estel has picked up the wicket of Ricky Ponting, who's played just outside his pads, got the nick, 
and McCallum's got a cross. The third wicket falls. And New Zealand's desperately in need of wickets. It wasn't the greatest delivery. You call that a strangle, and Ricky Ponting in good enough form at the moment to be able to get some bat on that delivery. New Zealanders are ecstatic. They've got the breakthrough they desperately needed. With Ricky Ponting walking back to the brilliant after what a fantastic innings of 105, and Australia lose their third wicket at 187. Afraid he's not going to. Although that will go for four. So it may result in keeping him down there, but not perhaps in the method that he'd like to. Oh. It's a good shot through the covers. Clark, it's a very good hand speed, and when he does hit the ball, he hits it very hard. Now runs. There's no one at that backward point area. Here you go, Mars. Well, no, not now, not now. Two to Clark, but I think a real chance. The New Zealand to pick up the fourth wicket. They can just put a bit of pressure on Michael Clark. That's the 200 up for Australia. Oh. There should be two here. Nice placement. Making use of a shorter delivery from Wiseman. Nice. Oh, beautifully bowled. That is magnificent. That has gone a long, long way. Terrific stuff from Paul Wiseman at a crucial time. Well, I just mentioned a moment ago he can genuinely grip a ball. And if you give him a bit of room outside the off stump, it will give you the room, and Martin looking just to really run that with a sort of a semi-angled bat. He's missed the ball. Perhaps it might have even clipped an inside edge, but it's got onto the stump. So Damian Martin is the batsman who's been dismissed. It's a very timely wicket for New Zealand. He's gone for 38, 2.15 for 4. Chris Cairns when you need him. <laughs> Justify a no ball from a spinner. I'd like to see him do that. Perhaps the last ball of this the second day. Michael Clark and uh, Jason Gillespie trying to eke out all the time they can. Yeah, mate. That's over in time, gentlemen. Over in time, says uh, Rudy Kurtzen. So that's it. And it's been a good session for New Zealand because Australia, through Ponting, were looking to steal the game away from them in quick time but they've pulled it back nicely the run rate uh, per over been dragged down from five to 3.37 about 65 overs uh, in the process this afternoon so they're only 15 overs away from the new ball and it's an hour of cricket tomorrow morning Stephen Fleming will feel well, a little dissatisfied that Australia got a rollicking start but he'll be very satisfied that they so Wiseman will start Michael Clark on strike Wait on. Yeah. Oh. Outside edge. Big gap there. No one at point there for Michael Clark. So he's aware of that. It's gone a little finer than he anticipated. Clever. It's a handy two. 226 for four. It's a goal! Brilliant fielding! That can change a match. That's what you need from your fielders. A mix-up between Michael Clark and Jason Gillespie. And for the Black Caps, the right man is walking back to the pavilion. It's Michael Clark. Brilliant piece of fielding. James Marshall, both these Marshall boys are so quick over the ground. I think you'll find he's out by a country mile here. Super pickup, super throw. Just when Clark might have thought things were starting to turn in his favour, he's been brilliantly run out. And Australia lose their fifth wicket at 226. 
Now that is a good shot though. There was no doubt in that shot. Lent on it, lovely shot through the gap. Didn't need to call for a single there. That was four for the minute he hit it. Wow. Gillespie, he's not going to run. He has smashed that. Here's the chance. Well, there's Gillespie. Just a little short. Tory tried to get it through quicker, get it through defences, but Gillespie played it well. Got him again for four more. Terrific shot, that one, from Jason Gillespie. Damn. Bit of room, and it's gone wide. Can it's lucky. And Vincent has to pull out. Sharp. Magnificent blow. Any batsman anywhere would be proud of this. Well, this cover drive brings up the 50-run partnership between these two. It was just that little bit of swing in the air that freed up the hands of Gillespie. He's played some lovely shots through that area this morning, and here's another one. Shot of a batsman, that. One more run. A thousand test runs. Good milestone, Simon Kadic. And he was very nearly denied it, almost dragging that on, but there it is. Thousand test runs, Simon Kadic. With the way you probably want to bring the milestones up, and a bit of shake of the head there, but take them any way you can. I think the fielder might have got a hand on this. This one won't go. Australians running and they'll run well enough to complete three and take the lead. That's it over to lunch. So Australia will go to lunch with their noses in front. 293 for five. Through the gap. It was in the air for a while from Cadditch. But he pierces the gap comfortably. There's the edge, gone. Gillespie the pass, Martin gets his man. Good bowling. Good bowling. Tailenders don't like the ball short, and it was good energy there from Martin. A little bit quicker than the two previous deliveries. And Jason Gillespie just getting in a trance with that one and, and catching up with the ball, offering a little edge. So the marathon effort from Gillespie comes to an end. He's contributed with 35 and it's 297 for six. That's straight in the air. Here's another one. That's a dolly. Dear, oh dear. That's a bonus. Simon Cadditch totally messed that up. Well, was this on to Simon Cadditch just a little quicker than he thought? Or was it the line of the ball? He was certainly wanting to get that a lot squarer. It's hit high on the bat and just spooned out to Paul Wiseman at mid-on who comes in and takes a very comfortable catch. Franklin and the New Zealanders are delighted. It's not just one wicket, it's two in a row. 35 Cadditch has gone, 297 for seven now. Just wide of slip, it's going to be a boundary. In the air, down. And that sometimes can be the problem if a batsman goes hard at the ball. You are close and looking for a defensive edge. And when it really comes hard, it just beats you with sheer pace. 
And I think that's what saved Shane Ward on this occasion, the fact that the slips are standing up. They don't want anything dying on them. Not getting there, that's really got there quickly. That's a tough slips chance. In saying that, though, they have got to be taken. If you want to win a test match, you've got to take those. Oh. It is out now. No heroics this time with the bat against New Zealand. At least in this innings, Fleming takes that one. That was in the bread basket. Well, I did my job there, Kenzie. I put the mockers on him. He's gone now, Warren. Jimmy Franklin picking up his fifth wicket. Stephen Fleming, wonderful slips catcher that man is. And he very, very happy. Australia now, 303 for eight. Oh, a streaky one. Once again, the movement away, finding the outside edge, but it couldn't find a, a hand in the slip corner. Edge, oh, away from Astor, it's second slip, and Stephen Fleming, he, uh, well, he's just, he can't believe it. Three times Gilchrist has found the boundary, three times in the air, through about third or fourth slip. I was going to say there's no three slips, straight down third slip's throat. New ball is very new, and uh, there is no real reason as to why there's not three slips particularly when you've come off a break and your bowler is fresh. Yes. Flicked away for four. Beautifully timed, in fact. Uh, will it get there? Yeah, it will. The area has been re-turfed, but uh, it was a sweet piece of batting. 3.24 for eight. Yeah. That's gone. A million miles an hour. Man's gone back out onto the point fence. Oh, good stroke. Beautifully played. Down the ground, onside, four more. It's there. Well, yeah, it's there. Well, it was there, now it's gone. Great batting. 12 from the over. 3.37 for eight. Oh, man. That's a terrific shot. It wasn't that bad a ball, folks. Yep. Easily. Gets that away. This might go all the way to the boundary. It will. Got enough on it. Again, it wasn't there to pull, but somehow, some way... Got it there. 53 now, the partnership. Gilchrist 44. So far this summer, Gilchrist has scored 500 runs against New Zealand in five innings. That is a good stroke. Nothing wrong with the delivery, it's just all timing, technique. An absolute brilliance. 360 for eight. He gets himself into a frenzy where once he's going and he, and he feels he's comfortable, he just keeps going. He has to keep going oh. and then he's so hard to stop. And there'll be a, a good round of applause from the Australian supporters here. And, and I'm sure the New Zealand supporters are going to lend a hand as well, given his entertainment value. How can you not applaud an innings... this ilk and it's always when Australia need him he's not getting cheap runs a ninth wicket partnership 69 Healy Mc McDermott well Gilchrist and Kaspervitz are fast approaching this partnership now worth 64 beautiful shot there Michael Kaspervitz well he's going to chip in when he can also he's pretty handy with this grey nickel blade in his hand. Yeah, and we've talked about what length to be bowling and maybe that back of a length, but it's the width that's been offered up here by Franklin this time. It allows Kastovic to free his arms and just goes with the pace of that delivery. 
down the ground. Only one. And that's the third ball of the over now. It was uh, two balls and then the break. That's the third. And that single takes this partnership to 70. So it's now the ninth wicket. Record partnership Australia versus New Zealand. And a little milestone. Record partnership. 67 minutes, so good scoring rate. You almost see the, the New Zealand shoulder slump, don't you, when Michael Kasmuth hits threads another one through the gap for four. Yeah, because they've plugged this area up. Look, you'll see as the ball goes through, there's, well, you can only see one fielder in your screen, but if, if we pull back and have a look through that area, let's have a look here at the shot that Kaspervich has got. There's a, a, a cordon of fielders in that gully point area, and yet he still managed to thread it through. <laughs> there you go. They're, they're actually on top of one another. Yeah, try and get it through there, Kasper. Oh, that'll do round his legs. Bold. He's got right across his stumps there. And it's time for a celebration as it's Franklin's five for he's worked hard for that. And he's been improving in the last two test matches. Great stuff. Not really the mode of dismissal I'm sure he was trying for, but Kaspovic helping Franklin there by getting too far across. Jimmy Franklin, Test Pfeiffer. And that's a great start for New Zealand after this rain break. 377 for nine. And he'll take a six. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, 383 for nine. Franklin to McGrath. Initially, you may have thought that appeal was for LBW. But the New Zealanders felt there was a bit of a bit of bat involved as it went through to McCullum. So six for. Yeah, I'd like to have a look at this replay. There's mixed feelings about whether it's LBW or caught behind. McGrath's certainly not happy. As we see here, ball pitching. LBW. McCallum, McCallum looked like it was a, a caught behind. He's throwing the ball up. I'll be interested to see which way it's gone. But Australia dismissed by New Zealand. Lead of 91. All out for 383. Yeah, I'm not sure that it was a shout for LBW. Not at all. It was they were going for the caught behind. I'm sure that's what Rudy Kurtz and it's given. And it looked just on the replay. The ball actually flipped his front pad then flicked his back pad which gave off two noises and maybe Rudy Kurtz and felt that that was the bat so the ball coming through front pad and on the back flat always very hard to tell and the close of an innings Franklin six for so a mighty effort from him crease just been marked there paint reapplied well here is the Australian innings Langer he went early bold Franklin for six. Hayden attacked, got going, and then Franklin in the wickets again with getting rid of him for 38. Pontine, well, we've talked a lot about this man's class, and we saw some more of that with a fantastic 105 runs. Martin got a start for 38. Clark was run out for 22. And later on in the innings, Gilchrist once again in fine form with 60. Mock appeal, I think. Just wants to be a little bit careful here, Glenn McGrath. I'll tell you what, he might be a tail ender. He did get a lovely 61 against New Zealand, but no one with bat in hand likes to be given out when they don't think they are. No one with bat in hand likes to get hit there either. Three slips in the galley. Oh, he's sneaking through. That could be out. He's gone. 
Glenn McGrath has struck second delivery. A little high, as you mentioned the first time. This one snuck through a little lower, beat the bat. But the frowns turned into a smile very, very quickly for Glenn McGrath. Let's have a look at this one. Pitching just outside off, nipping back a tad, sneaking through, and that's dead. That is out. That is out everywhere. That's always out. Look at that. Fired up fast bowler. It's got to ease the pain of the injustice he feels was done to him. Coming disappointment. His first duck in Test cricket in New Zealand lose their first wicket with no runs on the board. Off the hip and New Zealand are away. We have had some rain. Maybe just uh, towards the outer reaches of Eden Park, just a little slippery. And he gets uh, his innings underway. They just brought the third man up. Here's the oh, hits the helmet. Inside edge as well. The well, top edge. And now both marshals have been sconed. Well, pigeon. Heavens above, nine for one. You can see the uh, floodlights are on. James Marshall on strike, edged and gone. Straight forward catch to Langer. Beautiful bowling right in there on an off stump. And James Marshall fended straight into the safe hands of Langer, and now it's two down. A bit fuller there from Glenn McGrath, a smarter bowling. Put in a nice area, James Marshall just caught on the crease. And Justin Langer, who was at one stage down at third man, he's up at third slip, didn't miss out. Been working hard on his slips catching, and now very safe. He's gone for three, and New Zealand now in trouble at nine for two. Glenn McGrath, who's now only three short of 500 test wickets. Two for five he has. Straight away looking to go full and swinging it. Outside edge from James Marshall, just getting away from his pads. a mirror image of his dismissal in the first innings it was the same catcher at third slip Justin Langer the ball in the first innings just a tad shorter but smart bowling from Glenn McGrath I think he's calmed down now <laughs> he's back into some sort of rhythm he'll be attacking full and straight looking for that LBW and in the pads of Stephen Fleming and the skipper's off the mark though come on now well, Fleming's got a, a record that he won't to be too proud of. He averages uh, just 22 in the second innings of uh, any match in New Zealand and only 14 at Eden Park from seven innings. And his side need him to... Uh, need him to be there. Oh, wow, that's massive leg cut. Interested to see whether Stephen Fleming has a chat to the umpires here, and, and I, and I'm saying this because the the light now to me is starting to become a little bit, it's artificial. You can you can see the shadows, casting. There's about four of them around the players from each light. And when I was recently in India, the umpires were calling time as soon as they saw these shadows, from each light. So there'd be four or five coming off a player. Then they said that well, it's all artificial light now. And with the red ball and the darkness that usually occurs around the sight screens, it's too difficult, we're going off. And they didn't even offer a light situation. It was, we're going off because it's the lights have now taken over from the natural light that's still available. That is happening now. You can see the shadows being cast off in every direction from the players. And so it seems like, is the rule consistent or is it does it get determined by where they're playing in the world because it changed my view when they brought in the rule of the lights I, I then assumed well you can just play it out play the overs required out 
I think they're uh, they're talking about exactly your point. I, I think they're saying this is not normal light. This is totally artificial. It's the floodlights, and therefore with the red ball, it's not going to work for Test cricket. So that's uh, a sigh of relief for Stephen Fleming, and that will be the end of uh, the day's play. Ricky Ponning's just going to walk up to the umpires and check uh, as to the interpretation of what's happened here. Stephen Fleming will hill face the first delivery of the morning from Glenn McGrath. Here we go. Yeah. A loose over, right hand. McGrath. And that is the over. Of course, uh, players went off last night for bad light. Gillespie, simply brilliant. Put out the mitt and it stuck. The Fleming's dismal series has been ended by brilliance from Gillespie. And shake of the head, he middled it. He just got a bit early and the hands got away and therefore the ball went in the air and Gillespie just... Oh, what? It stuck. What a great start for the Australians. They have uh, sent back the New Zealand captain for just three. It's 15 for three. Crisp shot, really, is a beauty. Magnificent uh, forthright statement from Nathan Astle. Ooh. Well, it's an inside edge, and it's beautifully taken. Yeah, Hamish Marshall on his way. McGrath has been hitting the strings all morning and finally gets one to play the right note. It's the end of New Zealand's best player throughout the series and McGrath has 498. Yeah. It's come back a long way. Not much that Hamish Marshall could have done with that. Gilchrist down low to his left. McGrath bowling wonderfully well this morning. Moves on to 498. Five and uh, New Zealand now 23 for 4. It's a good shot. A little bit of work for Nathan Astle. Clubs it for 6. That's the way Astle wants to play. It's a very, very rare opportunity to free the arms. Yeah, and that's uh, bounced considerably and Nathan Astle looking to play a normal cut shot there but, that, but because of the the way that the ball has bounced off the wicket there, he's managed to get under it. It's in the air and down the ground, straight through the line, crunch. Always an element of risk, but taken out a little bit of that with a straight bat. Big pull stroke, and it's six. Got a good contact. Two men back, two, it's gone straight over the head of Simon Cadditch. It's into the stand, so it's that aggressive approach. Once again from Lou Vincent. And again, he's the winner. Kind of a top edge, two men back. One was put back there for it. But it's flown well clear on what is one of the shorter boundaries here. Through the offside. And as I say, now the back are getting back instead of twos and threes and singles they're getting boundaries occurring and again outside edge and put down by the skipper Ricky Ponning they were searching for that they knew that it was going to come but Jerry has he survived oh, because he's gone hard at that one it wasn't just a little fend he's gone 100% at that yeah he has and he's got a good piece of it and it's surprise just the same as one surprise I think Vincent at third slip in the New Zealand innings it's gone quickly enough that it's, he really just didn't ever have any balance really about the position here. He's in quite nice position there. He comes up, sees it, and makes a hash of it, really. In the air and just falling short of Glenn McGrath. It's going to run all the way. Big effort from Glenn McGrath. 
but I don't think it was ever going to really carry to him. No, I don't think he got a hand, uh, while well, it was near it, I don't think it was actually on the ball, the face of the bat closing again as Vincent tends to come down from an offside position across the ball slightly, so the ball is generally going to end up there, you can see the closing, the face of the bat, close to the hand, beaten perhaps with a wee bit of pace and low. Well, that didn't get away from him. He's got a good piece of that. Hey! You're not wrong. It's in the top ten. He had the catching opportunity. I think he might have put it down. Just shifted that front leg out of the way, didn't he? Gave himself a nice, clean arc. He caught it! Got to go. Yeah, he's out. He's out. Vincent gave up on the run and he said to Michael Clark, if you hit me, you've got me. And he hit. And it's not very often he doesn't. He got run out himself yesterday morning. And Lou Vincent, no, he knew the big mistake was he picked the wrong man. Well, we haven't really seen the brilliance of Michael Clark with the bat in the summer, but we've certainly seen the brilliance of Michael Clark in the field. He is deadly with his thrown arm. And Vincent is run out. The bright little innings brought to an end by Clark. Out for 40, New Zealand 5 for 93. Very full, very full, yeah. Well, it's starting to fall apart all of a sudden again. Hit on the full, Brendan McCullum. And uh, if you hit on the full, the umpire has to assume it's going on straight. And that's what Rudy Kurtzen came to imagine. And up went the finger. Just misjudging the length altogether here. Not the length of sweep. That ball's got underneath the bat. And that's dead. No doubt there. There was no doubt in the bowler's mind. And no doubt in the umpire's either. McCullum looking to attack. Two square too early. Out for zero. 93 for six. That's straight for four. Nathanesta moves into the 40s. And the 100 up for New Zealand. A lovely shot down the ground. Once again, we see the placement of the Tory. Feature of his play is that placement. That was lovely placement. 114 for six. So uh, coming up to 44 overs. 63 runs and six wickets that's a bowling machine it's a computer thrashed four 50 for Astle great knock from him he's come out and he's just counter-attacked and he deserves a rich applause here that's not bad too look at that crisp and clean Good stroke there. He really waited for that. It was only 123 Ks. Astle just waited and waited and slapped it past McGrath himself for four more. Yeah, McGrath trying another off-spinning slow ball. Nathan Astle always been a player to pick the slow ball. Even when you bolt him in the nets and his, his ability to to see it quickly and adjust and often batsmen are, are through the shot and have to check it but Astor has always had the ability to do that nicely placed here this will right, race away yes it will Clark couldn't get his arm around that one. Slicing that away, Vittori. This is actually Shane Warne's first over from this particular end. And straight away there's an opportunity. Jeremy Lloyd says yes. 
inside edge. Fantastic catch by Simon Cadditch. He had the Superman cape on and this occasion. Well, probably a great piece of captaincy in making the bowling in change. Backed up by a lovely piece of bowling. Operating on that leg stump line. Definitely an inside edge. And this is a super piece of building. Lovely catch. One-handed. Moving away to his right. Shane Warne delighted. Australians delighted. They've brought to an end what has been a very, very good partnership. And a very good innings by Nathan Astle of 69. New Zealand is 7 down now for 174. That's a big hit. That's a very good stroke. All the way for half a dozen. 178 for 7. This is good to see. The ball in the zone for James Franklin to play. Quite a safe shot, really. In the arc and gone through. Lovely shot. And it's amazing how taking wickets or bowling well can help the other side of your game and look he'll, he'll have a lot of confidence oh evasive action there which constitutes four leg buys bit of an oxymoron on that that it's leg buys considering that scones you on the melon lead now just over the hundred for new zealand just went down underneath it didn't bounce that much probably in the end could have played that quite comfortably oh. Oh. Tory catches up with it gets his ninth 50 just with a single some good fielding on the boundary but 50 runs for Daniel Vittori yeah, well played Daniel Vittori and just a, a polite little applause there from Shane Warne as well he acknowledges along with the New Zealand players that it's a very fine innings for his country and the, the Tory SWAT I think MCC coaching manual should maybe have that as terminology for the Vittori style in the air for a moment but uh, it's going to be a boundary for the New Zealanders Ducking into it. I think that's dinged the visor. Yes, it has, isn't it? The left visor has uh, taken a bit of, of a dip for the worst. I think the wire, a bit of it, might have taken one here and uh, the full brunt of this ball. And it's, uh, I think it's just altered its shape a little bit. Big effort here from Kasprovitz. That one's going to run away for four. So bonus runs all round. And his leg buys are indicated. But he's charging in at the moment. He's trying to break something open. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's all about effort for Kasprovitz at the moment. And gone. Ricky Pining's very handy in at silly mid off. He stays low, he doesn't commit himself. And he's caught quite a lot of those in sharp fashion. Yeah, and the look on James Franklin's face said it all. I just felt that Warren had been searching for this. He was looking, and again, that's that flighted delivery, which James Franklin had produced that big shot. This is the defensive option. Lovely catch by Ponting. Very, very low. One-handed. Great skill, New Zealand now. 220 for 8 in the air and that man in the deep straight between them Gillespie and Martin couldn't stop that one the fielders are out there for a miss hit shot just in that fashion yeah the base and reserve Daniel Vittori was dismissed in this fashion heading out towards that deep mid wicket area here with the strange angles at Eden Park this could play more into Vittori's hands here. That was the wrong one from Shane Warne. We don't see too many googlies. Just to 
took a big dive out when the ball was nearly stationary. A lot of giggling going on around the around the crease there. I don't know what's going on. The googly, shame one doesn't bowl that often. Often the, the googly comes from bowlers who tend to bowl with a, with a higher bowling arm. More difficult for the round arm leg spinner. Yes, Glenn McGrath, he's got a chance to take this and he takes it comfortably. He might have been a tad reluctant given that that now means he cannot get 500 test match wickets this match but as we keep saying it's for the team and uh, New Zealand you lose their ninth wicket now. Yeah, in his attempt to score runs for the team, Vittori sacrificed his own wicket. A great knock from the New Zealand left arm spinner. McGrath coming in to accept what was a simple cash. So Batori departs for a well played 65. New Zealand now 227 for nine. In the air now, and that'll be safe. There's no fielder out there. The Wiseman wants to get a hurry up. A yeah, nice shot here for Wiseman. That's in the air and through the gap. It's a very thick outside edge and not where Martin intended it to go. But he's off the mark and the crowd, the smallest crowd, go wild. 235 for nine. And take that. He got his dancing shoes on. Nicely struck there. And that'll be another boundary. So Wiseman's having a bit of fun. This is high and near. Glenn McGrath is coming back. He's going to have to go beyond the boundary rope. So now it's a legal catch. But I tell you what, there's a young groundsman down there that took a spectacular catch in front of us. Six of the best there from Wiseman. Well, it was well caught by the young fella down there, but... Great shot, Paul Wiseman. Gave that everything. Okay. Well, he's thinking like a batter. You've got to see and just keep your eye on the young fella in the blue tracksuit. And he took it quite easily. He's got an umbrella around him. He had a few golf carts behind him. He Glenn McGrath took him two deliveries to get one right up there and so 499 wickets will be the tally until he arrives in the shores of England in an, a few months time. Yeah, good hand by Paul Wiseman, done by some straight bowling from the champion fast bowler Glenn McGrath who quite fittingly will go to Lords in England in the middle of this year to, I'm sure, take what will be his 500 test scalp. So, he said a good hand from Paul Wiseman. 23 runs, but New Zealand bowled out for 254, a lead of 163. The chase, a few more than Australia would have anticipated, but a good effort there from Glenn McGrath, 4 for 40. Shane Warne, 4 for 77. And that session from lunch to tea, four wickets for 101. And some good intent again from the Black Caps. Uh, a little cameo from Wiseman towards the end. He was able to score 23 more runs in his test career and does allow this 163 lead that they've got. That is a tricky chase. But at the top end, Astle and Vincent were instigators today changing the flow of batting that we've seen throughout a different method was used it was an attacking mode and got things going and that's why I think New Zealand have got the lead they have now because of that partnership in particular as I mentioned McGrath 4 for 40 499 test wickets to him Gillespie a little expensive today 1 for 63 so was Michael Kaspervitz no wicket for 59 and Shane Warne 4 for 77 here we go. Martin to length. Yes. 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 Good stuff from Martin. 
An aggressive shot from Langer. Come on, boys. Out at him, Mato. Aiden forces to the onside. That really wasn't a bad ball, and that's just a classy shot from a classy batsman. And that is just going to race across the outfield here at Eden Park, and the second boundary of the innings, and just the second over. Now that's an area where Langer has become particularly strong in the latter part of his career. Chance. Yes, gone a mile. Matthew Hayden's on his way. Daniel Vittori. He's knocked him over, and that just uh, sets Australia back a wee bit. Hayden will be furious, but it's completely his fault. He hit the shot. He called the run. He took a gamble. He lost. Well, I think Hayden felt he pushed on this one past Vittori. But of course, Vittori is a left-handed thrower. Got across there smartly, and thus could throw in solidly and. Hayden had given up the ghost. He's run out by a mile. And he will be angry. He's out for nine. Australia 18 for one. The light is not flash, although it's good enough to play very good cover drives. So another boundary in the over, even though they've picked up a wicket. In New Zealand, we're to uh, snaffle another couple of Australian batsmen in the light may become an issue. Simply class that. This one may just run away for four. It's pretty well controlled. Oh! the air but uh, he used his feet and got good uh, momentum into the stroke and the 50 partnership up between Ponting and Langer Get. beautiful stroke here G Langer he, when he goes into the cover drive he leaves nothing behind him outside the line and it'll go away for four leg buys. Good it's a hundred for one. Charge. Just got to it. Intent was strong. Four runs. Haven't got one there. That is a superb cricket shot. Too short from Franklin. And Ricky Ponning has another 50. And a partnership of 100 between Ponting and Langer. Now, once again, you can see there's a lovely bold stroke, but perfectly safe. And this time for six. Oh, that's magnificent batting. He's going to give us a little treat to finish off the series, and it's probably quite appropriate that is a top shot Chris Martin 135 k's leaves the bat slightly quicker than that dead straight beautiful strike oh boy well the Daniel Vittori actually stopped that inside that was hit so hard if he did it was a magnificent piece of fielding but it all the ball the, the impetus of the ball forced them over the rope. It was hit so hard. Just have a look at this. Just the power of the bat and the swivel. It's picked Vittori out, I suppose, unfortunately. Yes, it has. It's, it's just pushed him over slightly. Now he's got to get over the rope. Yes, he does. With a little rubber compound. That'll be okay.
Well, Langer will get in the act as well. He doesn't quite get and supply the power. That's a 50 now for Langer. Well, eight from this over. So they're in credit here at the moment, and it's an accelerating run rate. So it could well be less than eight overs. It's going to go over the head of the bowler, and that's going to run away as well for a boundary. What will Fleming do now? He's tried to slow things down with spinners, changing the ball, the rain, the light. And uh, ball on the fast bowlers back again with the longer run-ups. None of it's worked. Quite a sad in a way. I mean, if Fleming, if this is his last game against Australia as well. I'll tell you what I'd do if I was Stephen Fleming. I'd take that thing, that towel out of my pants and wave it. Because that's all he can do now. That's all he's got left to do. This is a slaughter, officially. 16 off the Martin over. 141 for one. But he's playing those shorts of strokes as he did that night to open the tour. That has gone a long way back. And he's now dismissing the bowlers with disdain. Magnificent uh, getting down on that back knee and lifting the ball high. Yeah, yeah. Ah. That's got to wait. Down to the fence for four. Paddling it very fine. 154 for one. Well, Wiseman was disappointed here. He is operating on a leg side line, and you do need the fielders on that sweep to to field well for you but it was just hit just a little bit firmly and it went through it's just got too wide down that leg side it's a fine line when you are operating over the wicket to the left handers I suppose it's uh, time to quickly contemplate uh, Mark, who will be the man of the series. Inside edge, that'll go away for four, I think. Yes. Another four for Ricky Ponning. Adam Gilchrist would have to be uh, just pipping out Glenn McGraw, wouldn't he? Well, you can cut the field down to 11 immediately, and all those 11 wearing green caps. No, no, hold on a minute. We've, we've already worked out that Hamish Marshall's in the combined team. Ah, oh, good, no. Michael Clark doesn't make it. <laughs> there, mate. But it's hard to look past Gilchrist, isn't it, with two fine centuries and then a well-struck 60. Ricky Ponting in this game has been head and shoulders above anyone else. McGrath's been outstanding. Out to the longest boundary, and it might just slow up. Yeah, yeah, right. I think timing the ball beautifully again. A second boundary in the over. Now we're just down to one more hit, two runs to win. Ponting up to 86. Standing six-week campaign by Ricky Ponting and his men. Quite brilliant. Hey! Two to win. Oh, 
ball left in the over. Ricky Ponning uh, finds out. Two to win. Now inside edge. Close again. Maybe he hit his pad. Maybe he didn't hit it at all. Maybe he was out. Let's have a look. Sky track. Oh, that's another goodie. Of course, it is the Australian captain. Yeah, he did hit his bat, did, uh, his pad. And the ball looked to be adjacent of off stump for the second time in the innings. That's out. It's hitting middle and off. Frustration coming from McCullum. That'll be left to Justin Langer. Just one of those sort of decisions where you go, no, nah, let's just not delay this any further. Let's just get out of here. Fighting. Oh, Wes, that's good, mate. But, uh, Nathan Astor denied. He works hard for his wickets too, Nathan Astle. Goes at about 50 uh, runs per wicket. Yeah. That'll be it. Australia have won by nine wickets. Just as they did at Jade Stadium. And Ponning signs off the tour with a U beauty. Langer and Ponning have taken Australia to victory for the second time in the series. Shane Warne outstanding throughout. Outclassed. Outplay. Oh, Ricky Pontine, that meant a lot to him. He's played beautifully in this game. Took the decision to bat on. And he's done it in four days. Isn't he ecstatic? He's a man at the top of his powers. He's captain of a team that are at the top of their powers. Australia have won emphatically here by nine wickets at Eden.